the same name that the Bible said there's no salvation in any other name. For there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby that we must be saved. And I'm glad to say I know to, without a doubt that this is the hour of revelation before Jesus returns to get us that the Son of Man is going to be known and the true seed of God, we're going to have to really awaken and be prepared because we don't none know what are, but children, we're going to let you know that when Jesus had commanded these apostles to teach the nations, he wanted them to be baptized, the people they were teaching, to be baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and Holy Ghost. And what happened all of these centuries, they came up, and I reckon far as I can find, it's through the Roman, the Nicene Council, or the Catholic Church, I guess you'd say, they stood up with the degree that decree that went into all the world that there was one God and he was divided into three persons, but equal power and so forth. And then they put the name uh, Jesus Christ second place and put the titles as the way of baptism. But see, Jesus is a first and last. And everything you were to do in word or deed, you do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Well, they kind of put it behind and you think that's bad. Instead of making Christ the head of the church, guess who, who they put as the head? They put old Peter as the first pope. But see, they use scriptures, but they pervert it like a lot does today, twist it. But now when Jesus came through the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, who do men say that I the son of man am? Well, some said he was Jeremiah, they said, some say you're Elias or one of the prophets. And he said, but who do you say that I am? And then old Peter told him, said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. This is Matthew 16. And Jesus told him, said, blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. See, that shows you it was a spirit that revealed it. So Jesus said, And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, now that rock was never meant to be Peter. It was Christ. Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. But he did tell old Peter, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth, I'm going to bind that in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, I'm going to loosen that in heaven. And I'm going to show you, Peter, has got to see their bounder loose when it comes to water baptism or what name you're believing in. So it's important that we understand, as I showed you in Isaiah 9 and 6, that it was his name, this child that was born's name, that was to be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Can't you see that name is where it's all at today? That's where your healing comes in. See? Now, even Jesus said here in the book of St. John 14 chapter, and about verse 25, he said, These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you, but the Comforter, which is, come on, the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. You say, well, who in the world is the Father? Well, the Father, children, was the Spirit of Him. That was His Spirit. That's what He gave up on the cross when He cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? See, He wasn't looking to another God, no, sir. He was feeling that spirit leaving that body. Finally he said, Father, into your hand I commend it. Now, he was giving up the ghost is what was happening. He felt it leaving him. He cried out, just like the prophet David said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And then finally bowed his head and gave up the ghost. See, children, there wasn't somebody up there shutting the windows and couldn't look at him. That's all men's theory. And same way when we... And, and I'm not throwing off on the little people, but it's the truth. 
God never intended nobody to get in a pulpit and separate the deity that belonged to Jesus Christ and put it into three distinct persons. Now, I'll get you to Acts, but let me show you something to show I'm not telling you this wrong. Go with me, if you will, to Colossians. I'll just turn to it. Chapter 2 here. And I want you to listen to this. In about verse 6, he said, As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. He's talking to you and me. So walk you in Him, rooted, build up in Him, establishing the faith as you've been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. But now listen what he warns you because every teacher ain't going to teach you what Paul is. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ, read verse 9, for in him dwelleth, A-double-L, all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Now, what do they teach you? They teach you there's three distinct persons in the Godhead. The children know where is that Bible. Jesus said personally, John 10, 30, I and my Father are one. They've never been three. Well, what about 1 John 5, 7? That ain't three. He said on record in heaven. There are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost. And these three, didn't say as, are one. Jesus was right, children. Honey, he said, I'm the first, I'm the last, I'm the beginning, I'm the ending. And so help me if you'll go back and read Isaiah the prophet about him. I believe it's a 44th chapter, somewhere through there. He'll tell you straight out, God did. That I'm the first and I'm the last and beside me, there's no God. They can't be two first and they can't be two last. And Jesus said, I'm Alpha and Omega, I'm the beginning, I'm the end. And he was the beginning of creation. Everything was made by him. See, it's a deep thing, but he's wanting us to come out of this and learn of him. Now, go with me. We're going to take you to the book of Acts. But remember what I just read you. In him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And what did it say here? You're complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Now, if so much it goes with it, take me all week just to give you his deity and who he is. But look at verse 16 of Colossians 1, then I'll get next. For by him, verse 16, by him, not them, were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, dominions, principalities and powers. All things were created by him and for him. My Lord, he'd have to be the everlasting father. What was it Malachi said in there in the book of Malachi? said, have we not all one father? Hath not one God created us? Children, we're going to have to know this. Watch your Bible. All things were created by him and for him. Verse 17, and he is before all things. See, they can't be nobody before him. God said, there's no God before me, neither would there be after me. And here he's before all things. By him all things consist. He's the head of the body of the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. He rose to let you know this. For it pleased the Father, it don't matter about your preacher, but it pleased the Father that in him should a double L fullness dwell. Now, Where's there any power out of him? When the man rose from the dead and said, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Told him, Teach the nations, baptize them in the name, one name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Now, let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 2. And I want you to listen now. You can read it all, the first, second chapters when the Holy Ghost was given, in second chapter. But anyway, in verse about 36. Acts 2, listen to it. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made that same Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, why was Peter saying that? Because they didn't want him that. 
Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, now these were the ones that was believing. Men and brethren, what shall we do? Now notice, children, even though Peter was your chief speaker in verse 38, they wasn't just asking Peter. Notice it again. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? They knew they'd crucified him. Then Peter said unto them, why? Because he had the keys. God chose him to do it. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Children, how could Peter made a mistake there when he was standing with the apostles in Luke 24. Let's go back there. Just bear with me a minute. Go back to Luke 24 for just a moment and see if these apostles, every one of them wasn't right there looking Jesus right in the face. In Luke 24, watch this. And verse 44. These, and he said unto them, Jesus, these are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms, that's a complete Old Testament, concerning me. Then opened he their understanding, the apostles, <coughs> that they might understand the scriptures. And what he opened was what it meant. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> All powers given unto me in heaven and earth. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, Thus it behooved Christ to suffer. Did he do it? Rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in HIS, his name, among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Now hold on. Which one was right? Jesus here in Luke 47 verse of chapter 24, Luke 24, 47, when these red letters, Jesus said, repentance and remission of sin be preached in his name among all nations. Or that Jesus of Matthew 28, 19, that told them to baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost among all the nations, teaching all nations. Which one of them was right? Why, well, you know, preacher, <laughs> it's the same one, wasn't it? So what's going on? Matthew, it wasn't his fault. He didn't do nothing. He just, it's in red letters you're reading. Jesus told him to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost among the nations. Well, before they could, he had to, verse 45, open their understanding, Luke 24, verse 45, that they might understand the scriptures. What scriptures? What was written of him? In the law, Psalms, and prophets. And if you go back and read what's written of Jesus Everything Becker called him God. See? And then he opened their understanding and told them what's written in the law and the prophets. And he said that repentance and remission of sins be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem told the apostles your witnesses. So Peter didn't make a mistake. He knew what the name was. So what did he tell them? Remember everything you do in word or deed do it in the name. Then Peter said unto them repent. That's what Jesus said. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't leave that Christ out of there. For the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, to your children, to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God, who is that, shall call. With many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. It's crooked. Then, verse 41, where are we at today? Then they that what? Gladly received his word. Are you gladly receiving it? They were baptized. 
And the same day there was added unto them about 3,000 souls, and they continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine. See their fellowship, breaking of bread, prayers. Fear came on every soul, and God granted miracles and signs. And then, verse 47 said, the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. So when did Jesus go again, Peter? And why did he add 3,000, then start adding them daily in verse 47? Seven. <laughs> so he didn't deal it's wrong, children. It's a way it's been taught. Now, sad part, there's a division among us people that call ourselves Christians. But every one of us is not Christians if we're not born again, so forget it. I'm not putting this again nobody because everybody has got to come to the same knowledge. And we're all struggling, but I'm going to tell you what. If you want to get in it right, you'll have to obey the word and come in that name. And I'm going to tell you the honest God's truth. You know there's a division among the people that believe in the Trinity. And I ain't throwing off on these little people. And then there's us people that believe in Jesus. And of course, we get the worst names called Jesus only. said, you people deny the Father. No, we don't. We just found out who it is. You know, I mean, there's so much that God would like to bring his people together because he don't want us tossed to, fro, carried about with every wind. And children, I'm telling you the truth. Read every place in the book of Acts how they baptized. They never did use the titles. Here we can prove it in the book of Acts. I believe it's about the eighth chapter when old Philip went down and preached Christ unto them. Let's find it here right quick. Eighth chapter of the book of Acts. Watch this. Now, read it all when you get time. Verse 14. Now when the apostles, there they are again, which were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria received the word of God, they sent unto them who? Peter and John. Surely we can believe them two good men. Who when they were come down, prayed for them. Philip preached to them. Peter and John had to go down and pray for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet... He, the Holy Ghost, was fallen up on none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, we've got division among our own little people. Some say Christ ain't no part of the name. Well, I've got news for you. If Christ ain't no part of the name, then how can the name be any part of Christ? You can't separate it. Paul was not going against Peter, people teach that to you. They'll say Christ ain't no part of it. Yes, it is. Leave it alone. Peter started it right, and Jesus began at Jerusalem, hit Lynn children in the right way. So, when they said they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, Jesus is the Lord. It's that simple. So it's a division everywhere. But anyway, then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. How could they receive it if Peter made a mistake there? See, now go to Acts chapter 19 because there ain't nowhere you can go in this Bible that they baptized in water outside of the name of Jesus Christ. It just ain't in there. Now, go to Acts 19 and children, I'll tell you, I was blessed that I learned the revelation of him when I first come to him. But now I had a dad, my mom, and a lot of old elders that we knew that started out being baptized in the name and titles, and the ones that's baptized in the titles has been taught that there's three gods, or at least three persons in the Godhead. My dad was a preacher, didn't know the difference, but when the Lord got through with him, he found out. And he had to go read baptize every one of his people that he baptized in the titles and rebaptized them in the name. And why is it so important to have the name of Jesus Christ? Because everything we're to do in word or deed, do it all in his name. And not only that, but Paul said the whole family in heaven and earth is called by that name. Peter said it, children. He said the stone the builders rejected. That's your preachers, leaders back then too. The stone that the builders rejected, Jesus, he's become the head of the corner. Did Peter say, neither's there salvation in any other? Now most of you like me, you believe. I believe in believe. 
that there's no saving outside of Jesus because He's the only one that died for you, right? Well, what did Peter say? Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's no other name under heaven given whereby we can be saved. Now listen to me. If you'll agree that nobody can save you but Jesus, and I believe you do, then where is the name? Is it in Him? Is He the one that's got it all? Who else is there? Because there's no salvation in any other name or in any other, for there's no other name. And it's Jesus only once got the name of Jesus Christ. You understand what I'm saying? Honey, it's in Jesus. The Father is in me. I'm in Him. They ain't never been separated. Jesus said plainly, He that sent me, in John 12, 44, is with me in verse 45. My Father's not left me alone. He that believes on me, said, believes not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that sees me, sees him that sent me. No way possible can Jesus be less than the Almighty. You know why? Because there's no other person in this Bible that called himself the way Jesus did. I'm Alpha. I'm Omega. I'm the beginning. I'm the ending. Told Martha, I'm the resurrection. I'm the first, John. I'm the last. What about him in Revelation 1, 7 said, Behold, he comes with clouds. Every eye see him. The man that pierced him will look on him. All kindred earth are well because of him. He said, I'm Alpha and Omega, beginning and ending. Saith the Lord, which is, which was, and is to come, the Almighty. Honey, you read his birth, you read his life. He is it. And why it's important to you and me is because God didn't make us to go against the word. It's you preachers that done this. We need to come back to these people, the men of God here. Acts 19, listen to Paul. Watch what he told them. Verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, listen, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Remember how Peter told? They said unto him, We've not so much heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. What was the problem? And he said unto them, Under what then were you baptized? Under John's baptism. See, John didn't use the name. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with a baptism of repentance. He did that. Baptized them in water. Saying unto the people though that they should believe on him which should come after him. That is on who? Come on children, don't leave Christ out of this. That is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. No, he did not leave Christ out of there. But that Christ Jesus was the name of the Lord. God made him both Lord and Christ. Lord is a title. Jesus Christ is the name. Because Peter said it, I had nothing to do with it. He never said repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus and leave Christ out. He didn't do it, neither did Paul. But we've been taught these things so both ways is kind of Bickers at each other. <laughs> ones that know who Jesus is in fullness and the ones that separate him because of the way they were taught. So anyway it goes, you ought to stay with the Bible and let it do its work. Well anyway, when they heard this, they was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied and all the men were about twelve. So see children, Everywhere you read in that book of Acts, that's the starting of the church, they never baptized but in one way, and that's because it's Jesus. Now, let's go to Ephesians, I believe it is. Chapter 4, verse 1, listen. I therefore, remember Paul persecuted this way, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord, now he's bound to the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy 
of the vocation wherewith you're called. With thou lowliness, come on, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. He wants people to talk right so we can come together. I never wrote this, but I love it. Verse 4. There is one body. Now, the one body is the church. And one spirit, Paul said, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Come on. You don't get a different spirit when you get the Holy Ghost. You get the same one that the apostles had. Now, my time's up here, so I've got to read you this. Even as you're called in one hope of your calling, how many lords? One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, not three. Father of all, who's above all, through all, and in you all. So children, I see my time about up, but I'm just saying these things out of love as I know how. Let's learn a him. You'll never find any fault in Jesus. You can't go wrong. That's the man you need to see. So he said, come unto me and I'll give you rest. So children, write us in any prayer request. We thank God for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God. We would Amen. like to thank you for joining Brother Rowe and invite you to continue with him in outreach. Your prayers and support will be deeply appreciated. If God leads you to help in this ministry, please send your contributions to The Church of Jesus Christ, Post Office Box 283, Baxter, Kentucky 40806. And may God bless you.